if you're a business owner, there's gonna come a point where you need a stronger tech stack to have a clear picture of everything all in one place. From startup to enterprise, NetSuite is your one-stop solution. Visit netsuite.com slash SPI to download their KPI checklist for free and support this podcast too. If you do find yourself buried in manual work or struggling to have a clear picture of your business, you should know three numbers. 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have been upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. 25, NetSuite turns 25 years old this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. And the number one, because your business is one of a kind. So you can get a customized solution for all of your KPIs and one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash SPI. That's netsuite.com slash SPI to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash SPI. There was once a time when building a website was a massive undertaking and a huge pain, something that you would need to clear your entire schedule for. Well, guess what? Those days are over, and now you can build a professional, sparkling website in just seconds, thanks to Hostinger. In fact, I recently did this, and I shared the process on my YouTube channel, and it was absolutely mind-blowing, especially considering it took like days on end previously when I first started building websites. This tool is amazing, and I was using AI to do it. So Hostinger is a top highly rated global web hosting and website creation brand, right? And all you have to do to build a website is answer three questions. Here it is. Answer your brand name, you select the website type, you describe your business, and then you can customize it further with a drag and drop editor. It's literally that simple. I just went through this process. I promise you it is the easiest way to build a website. And it also offers some AI-driven SEO-friendly copy, an AI logo maker. Plus, they make all this super affordable. It's less than $3 a month, including a free domain name. So create a live website now at hostinger.com slash SPI. And listeners of this podcast can enter SPI for 10% off your order and a free domain name. H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash SPI. And use the code SPI for 10% off and a free domain name. It's incredible. Now back to the show. Why don't you try this habit and see if it helps you? After my feet hit the floor in the morning, I will say it's going to be a great day. This is not going to hurt. It's not going to take me any time. I might as well try it. So I started implementing that habit every morning when I woke up. After my feet hit the floor, I said it's going to be a great day. And in some way, I either said, yes, good job, or yes, you got this. You know, I'd reinforce it some way. Within three days, my mindset shifted. It pulled me out of the victim mindset into the victor mindset. Mm -hmm. By sending that intention out to the world, I subconsciously as well as consciously look for ways to make it a great day. Hey, hey, it's Pat here. You're about to listen to something a little different on the show today. It's not our usual Friday format where I follow up on Wednesday's episode. Don't worry, those aren't going away forever. Just a little break to bring in something even more special in my opinion, our Teaching Friday series, which we do with our SPI Pro members. We have an incredibly talented pool of people within SPI Pro, so we thought, why not give our pros the spotlight and teach you here on the podcast every once in a while? It's just one of the perks of being a part of Pro, in fact, is this possibility. With each episode, you get to hear a different pro teach you something special from their area of expertise. Without further ado, I'll let them take it away. Oh, and if you wanna find out more about SPI Pro and be a part of it, you can go ahead and apply at spipro.com. You're listening to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, a proud member of the Entrepreneur Podcast Network, a show that's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now today's guest host. She walked over 200 kilometers in Spain while trying to complete the Camino de Santiago. Julie DeLuca Collins. Job searches can feel like they're taking forever, a real slog. So stop searching and just match with Indeed. So ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, messaging, so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. If you want to hire fast, you need to go where the talent is and get unparalleled access to job seekers with over 350 million unique visitors globally, according to Indeed data, and an extended reach through Glassdoor. I love how adaptable Indeed is uh, as well, whether you're hiring one person or you need lots for a scalable project, like hiring platform that lets you schedule and interview hundreds of candidates in one day, like there's no other one that you would want to use. 
So join more than three and a half million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Smart Passive. Just go to Indeed.com slash Smart Passive right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Smart Passive. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. You need Indeed. If you're at a desk a lot like I am, it is really important to move around and increase circulation as much as possible. And a sit slash stand desk can be a massive game changer. If you haven't tried one before, this offer from Uplift is for you. Plus, you can support the show at the same time. Visit upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. Uplift Desk is the place to go. There are so many customization options, plus free 30-day returns, free shipping, free accessories with every desk. And did I mention the industry-leading 15-year warranty? It's no wonder they've been wire cutters pick for six years in a row. Plus, they offer a great range of ergonomic chairs and storage systems if you want to give your whole workspace a makeover. They even have an augmented reality feature so you can see what your new desk will look like in your space using your phone. I mean, they even make a height-adjustable conference table that doubles as a regulation-sized ping-pong table. These folks have really thought of it all. And if you want to build the workstation of your dreams, I highly recommend checking them out. Just go to upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. That's U-P-L-I-F-T desk.com slash SPI to get 5% off your entire order. Okay, welcome back, everybody. This is Julie DeLuca Collins, and I am a member of the SPI Pro community. It has been a pleasure to continue to be not only a part of Path Lens community, but also someone that gets to learn so much from the SPI Pro podcast. So I want to tell you that this is a treat to not only be here for a Friday episode of the Smart Passive Income Podcast, but also to have a friend and teacher with me who is here to teach some of these concepts. My friend and co-podcasting person today is Linda Fogg Phillips. And Linda, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to the listeners. Hey, Julie, it's so good to be here. Thank you for for including me in this opportunity to be on Pat's podcast. I am, uh, obviously, I'm Linda Fogg Phillips, as you mentioned. I am the CEO and co-founder of Tiny Habits Academy. My other co-founder, of course, is my brother, Dr. DJ Fogg, who developed the Tiny Habits methodology. But really, my biggest claim to fame is I am a mom of eight kids. Yes, I know, crazy, (laughs) right? But that's provided me really a living breathing, working environment to really learn human behavior and have the formation of habits within my own household, as well as taking it out into the world. So yeah. that's probably the shortest, simplest, most important part of who I am. And what I, I, do. I love that. And by the way, I first learned about you without knowing it when I read the book, Tiny Habits. And then I heard BJ speak on Clubhouse. And all the things made sense in my world. I have been someone who really feels that habits really fuels your life and can create the traction and results that we're looking for. But there was a piece of the puzzle missing for me. So for the individuals who have never heard of the Tiny Habits book, which, by the way, everybody should hear about the Tiny Habits book and everybody should know about BJ's work. I would I'm going to defer to you to tell us a little bit more about Tiny Habits, about BJ's work, and about the book. Awesome. Yeah, as you know, because Julie, you've been through our coach certification training program, so you're an expert in habit formation. The book, well, to back up, probably if I were to say, if somebody were to say, well, what is Tiny Habits? This is sort of a bite-sized summary of what I would say Tiny Habits is. Tiny Habits is a breakthrough method that gives people hope and evidence that they can change. Now, that's the result. Now, the actual habit formation method itself, and as you know, Julie, we teach habit formation as a skill. It really is a skill that can be developed and fine-tuned. A lot of things out in the world today are not correct around habits, and unfortunately, people continue to try to create habits, and they fail, and then they think it's their fault, and they just feel like, oh, I can't do this. It's not your fault. We don't want you to feel guilty about not learning or not knowing how to successfully create habits simply because if you aren't familiar with the Tiny Habits Method, you don't have the science or the breakthrough method behind it. Now, in the Tiny Habits Method, there are three distinct parts. We call it the anatomy of a Tiny Habit Recipe. And we can go into this a little more in depth, but the A, we call it ABC, 
The A part of a tiny habit recipe is an anchor moment. That is an existing routine that acts as a prompt. It tells you to do the next step. A couple of examples of an anchor moment might be after I brush my teeth. Hopefully all of you brush your teeth in the morning, so that could be a good <laughs> yeah, right. Or it might be after I push start on my coffee maker. Or it could be after I put the key in the ignition of my car. Anything like that that you do on a regular basis that's part of your routine can be an anchor moment that you attach to a new behavior. That's the B part, the behavior. The behavior needs to be tiny enough that it's easy to do. That it's not relying on willpower or motivation to do that behavior. In the tiny habits method, we make that behavior super, super tiny. There's two ways to make behaviors tinier, and, and we go in depth as we train you as a coach in the tiny habits method. There are two ways that you can make a behavior tiny enough. And how tiny is tiny enough? It's 30 seconds or less to complete that behavior. Oh, my God. That 10, 30 seconds or less. And someone like me, when I yeah. first heard that, Linda, by the way, I'm like, I don't know if I could do that because I like to go big or go home. But that was my mistake many yeah. times. Yeah. And most people do like the go big or go home. I mean, just look back through your history. How's that worked for you? Not probably good. Not. <laughs> yeah. And probably not very well. What we're trying to do in the analogy here is we're trying to plant a little tiny seed that takes root sprouts and grows to be the bigger behavior. What we're creating as the automatic habit is that really tiny behavior. And trust the process because it does, as you know, in your own life, it does take root. And as you work with your clients, you see this as well. So you have Absolutely. evidence that this actually works. It will grow and expand to be the bigger behavior. When you're relying on motivation or willpower, it does not create sustainable habits. And that's what we're really after is long-term sustainable habits that we can implement in our lives that design the kind of life that we want to live. So yeah. that's why it's so important. So don't discount, oh, it's too tiny or why it's so tiny. Why should I do it? Absolutely. And I have to tell you that for me, I told myself a story that I was never a good plant person. And since I became a tiny habits coach, I'm correlating it to having some thriving plants because I, well, number one, it created a tiny habit to remember to water my plants. <laughs> but every time I water my plants, I think back to I am uh, in my life creating these tiny behaviors that sprout to big or beautiful things. And that has been something that has been incredibly life changing in my business and in my personal life as well. And so we talked about the anatomy of a habit and then the anchor moment, the behavior. And tell us about the last part. The last part is my favorite, actually, and that's the celebration. So that's the C, the ABC, the celebration. Mm -hmm. And this, so let me explain a little bit about what we mean by a celebration. And a celebration needs to be an instant celebration. In fact, I'm going to encourage our listeners to write this phrase down. Now, if you're driving, don't write this down. But if you're someplace where you can write it down, this is a very important phrase. And the phrase is, emotions create habits. Mm. But again, emotions create habits. The celebration part is tapping into your emotions, pulling up a positive emotion and attaching it to the behavior that you're wanting to create as a habit. It reinforces that behavior. This also is a good time to say, you know, it does not take 21 days to create a habit. That's a Thank fallacy. you for saying that. Yeah. There are such and misconceptions. Yeah. 21 days, 66 days, 100 days. And the reality is that then we're tracking mm. Uh, this and at the end of 21 days, when we fall off the process, we become very sad and we go down the spiral of I should have, would have, could have, and we don't feel yeah. good. So then we don't create a habit. Yeah, we blame ourselves yeah. and we, we, we become hopeless in mm. our ability to change behavior. That's a really dangerous place to be emotionally and mentally. So we're trying, don't put yourself there. Don't go yeah. there. Let me give you an example of um, what we mean, mean by emotions create habits and then the instant celebration part of the tiny habits methodology. We have done some studies on this. We've tracked it. And in the last year, we have been able to determine that instant celebration, that emotion needs to occur within six seconds of doing the behavior for it to be most effective, Ooh. reinforce that behavior. So it's not a glass of wine or a piece of chocolate or a new pair of shoes. <laughs> You're right. Although rewards. those are good. <laughs> those are rewards. We love rewards. But here again, this is another misconception in the world of habit formation. Rewards do not create habits. Mm -hmm. Rewards are great. But it's the instant attachment of a positive emotion that creates a habit. Now, how do you do that? 
Well, it could be as simple as, you know, saying good job or way to go or a thumbs up. The one I like the best as far as an instant celebration is on my phone, my screensaver. I have a picture of some of my grandchildren. It pulls Aww. up love and the compassion and the affection that I have for them. But it also is a picture that was taken at the beach when we were together. So it brings up a fun time that I was able to spend Aww. with them. Just looking at that picture, all those feelings come flooding back. And then I'm able to attach those feelings to that behavior to make me feel good and to reinforce that behavior. So for the listeners, I want you to pay attention to the anatomy of the habit, right? Is the anchor moment and all of us, because our brain likes to automate things, have tons of anchor moments that we can attach new behavior to and that that's what the B is, the behavior and the celebration. And I tell you, as a tiny habits coach, I know that a lot of people tend to struggle with this concept like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. I don't want to celebrate. It's kind of whatever they think. Right. However, you just gave us a really great way of feeling God in that moment um, for me. I have my dogs that, who are my constant companions here at home. One of my tiny habits that is, you know, it's an automation. Now it's one of the things that I do when I come downstairs in the morning. That's my anchor moment. I have to let my dogs out every morning. So when I let them out, I fill my glass of water. And then I celebrate when the dogs come back in, it's full. And I'm like, boys, look at me. I, I filled my water. Yay, me. And of course, I'm talking to the dogs, but I feel good because I'm interacting with them and they're all so happy and I feel good. And it becomes that automation. And I think that we complicated so much, but it doesn't have to be complicated at all. No, in fact, we have exactly. I love that, that example, Julie. I have dogs too. And, and one of my celebrations is is playing with my dogs or petting my dogs or even thinking about them like I do my grandchildren. Aww. Yeah, my kids think I love my dogs more than I love them. <laughs> I'm not going to say that's not true. I do love my kids more than my dogs, but sometimes they wonder about that. Yeah. Um, you know, but going back to celebration, all of us have real life examples that show us that emotions create habits. And it's not 21 days and it's not repetition and it's not rewards. One example that I like to use when I'm training coaches on using our emotions to reinforce behaviors that become automatic behaviors, sometimes in one or two days that fast, is I've got an aura ring. Now, many of your listeners probably have an aura ring or they may have an aura ring. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up. It's amazing. It measures your biometrics throughout the day. I use it primarily because I struggle with sleep. So it helps me adjust my sleep habits so that I get more efficient sleep and I am able to get restful sleep. Now, if you have an aura ring, I'm going to ask you this question. Okay. The aura ring pairs with an app on your phone. Uh -huh. How many times does it take you to get in the habit of checking that app every morning? Um, yeah, that, I, 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 I forget because I'm like, okay, all, the, all these other things are happening. But as far most people that I talk to that have an aura ring, when they check that app, it's within one or two days. That's really? now an automatic behavior. That's a habit. Why? Because it makes them feel empowered. Oh, when they look at the data so on their app that the ring transmits to. Okay. And so everybody that's listening, think, how long did it take you? Did it take you 21 days? No, no. probably not. Probably took you one or two days. Okay. And the reason why is it made you feel empowered when you and looked at your data. Absolutely. And see, I don't have an aura ring, but I, you know, what I do is I do intermittent fasting. And it didn't take me very long to get back into the habit of intermittent fasting when I decided to create a, a tiny habit recipe for it. And really, I check my phone when I go in and I say, I'm done fasting. I get a little, congratulations, you did it. And, yep. and I think that that for me, again, it's been such an easy thing to do because it immediately reinforced and celebrated that I was doing the behavior. So I love this example. This is really, really, really good. One of the first things that I loved about Tiny Habits when I started to, number one, read the book and learn more and started to kind of implement them in my life from reading the book is we have, well, BJ has a habit that he talks about in the book, and it's a very popular habit that most of us tiny habit coaches implement, and that is the Maui habit. Talk to me about the Maui habit and how can listeners maybe implement this in their life? Because it's a very easy habit that they can bring in and start up with. 
this really is, this is what we call one of our classic tiny habit recipes. We have several classics, but this is my favorite recipe of all time. The reason why is it truly changed my life. In fact, I give it credit for saving my life. And the history behind the Maui habit, this was in the early days of when BJ and I, I were working on the tiny habits methodology and playing around with it a lot and already knew it was a very effective methodology, but really wanting to get it out to the world. But I was also at this point in time in a really difficult place mentally and emotionally in my life. I had lost my 20-year-old son to an accidental Oxycontin overdose. I was struggling with a daughter who had bipolar illness that was in and out of the hospital. Also at this time, we had a home building business in Las Vegas, and this was during the, re- the housing crisis. We lost our business. And we had to lay off all of our employees, which included my son, my son-in-law, my brother. It was a really difficult time, and I was struggling. BJ and I are very close. And one day as we were talking on the phone, and this is before it even had a name, we hadn't named this habit yet. As we were talking on the phone and, and BJ knew that I was really in a dark place mentally and emotionally, he said, hey, Linda, why don't you try this habit and see if it helps you? And the habit goes like this. After my feet hit the floor in the morning, I will say it's going to be a great day. And of course, you, you reinforce it and you celebrate it. I'd always say put two thumbs up and go, yes, you've got this or way to go. At first, when he told me that, it's like, oh, that's sort of silly. How's that going to help me? But being his sister and, you know, being that we're very close and knowing that he really had my best interest at heart and also knowing he was a brilliant guy, still is a brilliant guy. Yeah. I thought, okay, this is not going to hurt. It's not going to take me any time. I might as well try it. So I started implementing that habit every morning when I woke up. After my feet hit the floor, I said, it's going to be a great day. And in some way, I either said, yes, good job, or yes, you've got this. You know, I'd reinforce it some way. I'd release the endorphins and dopamine through the celebration. That's what that does. Within three days, and this surprised me, within three days, my mindset shifted. It pulled me out of, by just doing this habit, it pulled me out of the victim mindset into the victor mindset. Mm -hmm. Huge shift. That shift alone impacted the rest of the day. I started looking for things that went well and that went right things that were good, as opposed to being pulled into all the negativity or the hard things that I was facing. I have practiced that habit every single day since that moment. And I have found that it really gives me that strength in the morning and it helps me start my day off with a win, the positive mindset and saying, yes, this is going to be a great day. And as a result, by sending that intention out to the world, I subconsciously as well as consciously look for ways to make it a great day. So that's the Maori habit. That's a habit I recommend our coaches teach their clients and also I recommend to my clients. My results and the impact that it had on me are not unique. We have people write us. We have clients report. I mean, everyone that has practiced this habit that has the time to interact with us or respond to us tells us how impactful it has been. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for me specifically, I live in New England and living in New England uh, in the in the wintertime, it is dreary and cold, and I have been having a challenge in the last few years. And when I became a Tiny Habits coach and I started to implement the, the Maui habit, it really helped to set up my day in a different way. Yes, you know, it's still a challenge for a um, myriad of other reasons, but that's how I start my day. I put my feet in the ground and I look at my dogs, of course, because they're all excited to go outside. Mm-hmm. And I say, hey, boys, it's going to be a great day today. <laughs> Love that. And, I, Love that. and they're so happy wagging their tails. And I'm like, OK, let's go downstairs. I'm coming. And I may be half asleep, but that's a little mm-hmm. bit of what we do. E- again, for me, I wanted to say, and if I haven't had the opportunity to say this to you or BJ, thank you for the opportunity to have individuals like me who are coaches and entrepreneurs who are creating an impact on the lives of others through the work that we do. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to level up my skills in offering the certification to be a Tiny Habits coach. I know that it has impacted the work. I'm a better coach for it because not only do I show up as a better human, I'm, I, and by the way, I am an imperfect human. I'm very good at being human. However, I have, it gives me a lot of hope. And again, I am a business and life strategy coach. I help individuals go confidently and build the business and life that they want, but do it in a way that is sustainable. I think that for many entrepreneurs, they start and they have a lot of dreams of the freedom and flexibility that being an entrepreneur 
will bring them, but they're working 24 seven. And oh. one of the things that I aim is to teach them how to build their business in the way that will give them the freedom that they've been looking for, but also the type of income that allows them to live their life in a way that they envision. I have to tell you, like you said, many of my clients, when I started to implement the tiny habits methodology with my clients, I found that they were making great improvements. And because anybody can teach you business, anybody can teach you how, this is how you do email, this is how you market yourself, this is how you get clients. But if you don't actually do the work, that mm-hmm. they're teaching you, then you're not going to be able to do it. So I start off with the framework of tiny habits. The Maui habit is the first thing that I teach my clients as well, because I want them to be in that positive mindset. And then we start to really be able to behavior design based on what they want to accomplish. What is it that they want for their business, for their life? And we begin to create those tiny habit recipes that they can go forward. And yes, you are right. My clients stay with me for a while and they're like, I'm not going anywhere. I have a client. We just got back from a women's retreat. She hosts an event and really the way that she's been able to not only grow her event, sell out her event, but then be able to impact the lives of many other women is because I've taught her how to be able to create these recipes that allow her to show up for her business where it could be very easy to be scattered and not be productive and not do the work every day that it takes to really run a business intentionally. So I love that. And and I know that I'm a lucky girl to be part of the family of the Tiny Habits Coaches Community also SPI Pro, because these two are my superpowers, I think. (laughs) I love that. I love that. I told you I have a lot of certifications when it comes to coaching, but Tiny Habits is the one certification where I'm always getting training from BJ, from you, from other coaches. And I never feel like I'm floundering. I never feel like I don't know I'm out there in an island. And that's really important as we're going through this process of life, of business owners, of building something. Community is incredibly important. And I know that um, this is why I, I wanted to teach and I wanted to bring this episode to the SPI, the Smart Passive Income community, because like Pat, service and creating community are some of the biggest values that the Tiny Habits Academy has. And that those are my values as well. And it's all a great marriage together today. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. No, and I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm trying to earn brownie points, but it's true. And by the way, every time I've gone through any coaching certifications, I did it for pure selfish reasons. I wanted to better myself personally. And the bonus is that I get to use it in my business as well. But if someone is listening and said, oh, my God, this this tiny habits, I want to learn more. Tell me more about how can they leverage uh, the the academy? How can they connect? And what is the process of becoming a tiny habits coach? Yeah, the tiny habits academy. There's two websites. There's tinyhabits.com, which is BJ's research site and also where you can sign up for the five day program. And there's tiny habits academy. Dot com. That's where we do all of the training. That's where we we have great blog posts. We have other courses. Also, you can always schedule a call with me. I have discovery calls that you think, oh, is this the right fit for me? Or I have questions. I have time slots every single day. Amazing. So just to reiterate everyone, remember the anatomy of a tiny habit is the anchor, the behavior, and the celebration, which are very important. You're going to find the anchor moment in your life to attach the new behavior to, and then you're going to celebrate and feel good right away because emotion is what creates the habit and change. And now if you want to connect with Linda and learn more about becoming a tiny habits coach, you're going to go to Tiny Habits Academy. Dot com. If you want to participate and maybe you want to have someone like me coach you in creating tiny habits, you're going to go to tinyhabits.com and sign up for the free five days and there's no strings attached. You can do the five days and nobody's going to try to sell you anything, which is amazing. Make sure that you connect with Linda on all of the social media platforms. Follow BJ Fogg as well. Get the Tiny Habits book. And if you are looking to increase your confidence in your business and life, make sure that you find me. I'm Julie DeLuca Collins on all of the social media platforms. I'm part of the SPI Pro community and the Academy as well. And my website is goconfidentlycoaching.com. So everybody, thank you for tuning in. 
And until next time, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Thank you so much for listening to the Smart Passive Income podcast at smartpassiveincome.com. I'm your host, Pat Flynn. Sound editing by Duncan Brown. Our senior producer is David Grabowski and our executive producer is Matt Gartland. The Smart Passive Income podcast is a production of SPI Media and a proud member of the Entrepreneur Podcast Network. Catch you next week. Hey, if you're looking for a new podcast to add to your rotation, I've got one for you. It's called Dirty Money, and it's like a hybrid between a true crime and a business podcast. So hosts Jonathan Small and Dan Bova tell the tales of legendary scammers, con artists, and barely legal lowlifes who stop at nothing to rake in millions. Recent episodes include a man who looted $100 million from his own company. Crazy. Give it a listen. Head on over to Dirty Money right now on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher.